Well, Lee, congratulations. Um, Kevin, I asked him about a quote for you, and he just said that you, you were such a great example for the young guys on and off the ice. So can you talk about that relationship you built with them and then what this honor means to you? Well, first of all, I'd like to start off and say I'm totally humbled by this. I, I was the luckiest guy in the world to be able to come out here and play with this group. And uh, I look at it and I started thinking about it after I learned yesterday that what was going to happen. And of course, I had Kevin as my partner. Uh, Paul sat right beside me. Mark was my roommate. And of course, Gretz, well, what can you say, right? And I, I was telling uh, Tim before we started here, when I was room with Mark, he was always so smiley and congenial and everything. And uh, the day of the game, it was like his eyes just turned and he had daggers in him. So I look at it and I say, I was so lucky to play with this group of people and teammates. I can never remember in the going in the dressing room and not have a smile on my face. It was just such a great group and I owe them everything. Um, it, it, it was an incredible time to be able to play professional sports and uh, and be with this group. And I mentioned that this, it was like the perfect storm you get. It only happens once in a while where you get a group of people together and they're so, uh, uh, can, can get along so well. And I can never remember any uh, dressing room things that it was always, everybody was smiling and happy and it was great. Well, yeah, that's awesome. And uh, Ryan, for you, um, you know, you, you got drafted in 94, you, you came in pretty much right away. And, you know, that 39 goal season when the orders got back to the playoffs and you really seem to, to match the blue collar mentality of order fans. Um, you, you were a fan favorite for a long time. What does this mean to you and your family? And uh, how did the phone call go uh, when you got the call from Wayne and Chris? Well, first of all, I wanted to congratulate uh, Lee. Um, what, a, what a great honor to go in with a, a, a guy that has shown so much, done so much for the organization. And uh, I couldn't be more honored to, uh, to uh, go in with you. Uh, yeah, Greg's. It's. Uh, I mean, there's so many people that make a team, and it's not just the players itself. It's the the staff, the coaches, the obviously the owner. You know, go back to the Peter Pocklington days. To you know, obviously the uh, the the numerous amount of uh, uh, of owners at the one point when things were going sideways, and just everybody. It, coming together like uh, Foggy talks about that locker room and that cohesiveness. And, um, you know, I owe it all to, uh, to my teammates and, and this is, this is for them too. I mean, gosh, I couldn't be, uh, you know, get into this honor. This honor is uh, huge compared to so many great things. So I'm, I'm humbled by it, but uh, um, yeah, just extremely ecstatic to, you know, get the call from Wayne and, and uh, Bob was on the call and just Wayne just can, you know, said all the things that, uh, that, you know, numerous people want to be as an NHL player, but an, an oiler for that matter. So, I mean, Gretz was my childhood hero and, um, you know, I got to play the team that I grew up loving and watching and now to how this unfold is uh, very humbling. So, I couldn't be more proud. Thank you for that, Ryan. We'll go to Rob Tichkowski. Hi, uh, Fogey. I was just gonna. Uh, I was gonna ask. Um, uh, you weren't a guy that put up a whole bunch of stats. You were this sort of this this veteran, a uh, uh, leader, a uh, uh, guy known for his for his toughness and such. What does it mean to you that this organization? You know, you're one of the first guys they recognize. That your contribution to helping lay the foundation for what the other are is is recognized. Oh, like I previously said, I'm totally humbled by this, and I was the luckiest guy in the world to get with this group. And I look back and I look at. I want to thank Glenn Sather for giving me a chance to come here and play, and it was just 
incredible group of, of teammates. And I look back and I think about it some days. And it was always everybody had a smile on their face. There was no discontent or people unhappy. And uh, I, I forgot to thank or uh, congratulate Ryan. I mean, I watched him play after and what an incredible player and leader for the Oilers. And uh, way to go, Ryan. Yeah. But, uh, and I look at Edmonton, it's such a wonderful city. Carol and myself decided to make this home after hockey was over with. And the one thing I thought about constantly is the fans of Edmonton, they seem to understand that every day wasn't going to be perfect. And I looked at the first year, at the first year, I think at Christmas time, uh, before we had, uh, I don't even think we had a break at Christmas back then, but we played in Los Angeles and we got beat 8-2. And I think Wayne scored both goals for sure, I think, <laughs> right? But and I, and I had a long conversation with Glenn and it was pretty interesting. And uh, it seemed like from that point on, things got better and we made the playoffs and we had such an incredible group no matter how tough things were at times, everybody had a smile on their face and was willing to work hard and do whatever they did. And, uh, and of course, the fans of Edmonton, I think they're the greatest in the league. And uh, it just thought everything was very harmonious, that's for sure. How did you see your role on that team? What did, what, what did you want to be? Because they had, they had a lot of stars. They had a lot of uh, elite players, went on to be Hall of Famers. How did you... Uh, make your impact? Well, I think I looked at it and I, and Kevin is uh, here somewhere, I'm not quite sure, but uh, we were like kind of the shutdown people to make sure that when we played against the great players in the league at that time, that we were trying to limit their scoring. And uh, that's the way we looked at it. I, and I can remember having a conversation with Kevin was playing Pittsburgh one day. Kevin says, we really got to be ready to go to play against Mario tonight, right? And I said, yeah, that's for sure, because he's a great player. But it kind of gave us incentive all the time when we were playing against the top scoring lines and things like that to try to shut them down and do the very best we could. Uh, if Kevin's around, I was gonna I was going to ask him just sort of what sort of residual impact Lee Foglin had on Kevin Lowe as, as a player going forward? Well, it might be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin was such a uh, go-get guy. I, I can still remember one night we were playing at home against Calgary and uh, uh, Theo Fleury scored a goal and uh, he went down on one knee and gave it the fist pump just before there was anything like that, right? Kevin looked at me and goes, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Rob, I, I, as, I, as Jason alluded to um, earlier, you know, asked for a, a quote about Foggy, and I said, um, you know, he was our foundation. He was everything that a young player could look up to and – and have the comfort that everything he was doing was the right way to do things. And that was really important at, at a, you know, form of time in our careers. And I'm, I'm sure Ryan uh, has players that he looked up to when he came to the Oilers that really helped him out. And then of course he became that player himself, but um, uh, yeah, Foggy was, uh, I mean, it says it all. I'll, I'll give you one example on his, uh, on his, physical uh, contribution to the game. Uh, Lee was actually in a position to, to tie, I think it was Bobby Orr for the most shorthanded goals by a defenseman in the season. And in the last regular season of the game, he jumped up on the play shorthanded and ended up crashing into the post. And he had, and he had a bad, very bad Charlie horse, like unplayable for 95% of the players. And uh, he spent two days with his, leg uh, pulled back so that his so uh, and tied and, and icing it so that he could play for the first game in the playoffs 
literally didn't, you know, other than trying to get up on it once in a while. Uh, and if, if you know what I mean, he, he, he took, you know, rope and tied his ankle to his butt so that his quad wouldn't swell up. And then uh, in terms of being unselfish and team first, of course, is when uh, he made the decision to give up the captain, captain seat of Wayne. And uh, I, I would say that in Wayne's career, he would say that that's one of the most um, uh, impactful moments of Wayne's career when, when, when Foggy did that. Thank you for that, Kevin. We'll go to Reed Wilkins of 630 Chad. Thanks, guys. Lee, Ryan, congratulations on getting into the Oilers Hall of Fame. Ryan, you mentioned when you played the, the generation of Oilers that you watched and you looked up to Wayne Gretzky. There's a generation of fans that looks up to you that way, the way you looked up to Wayne. And when this was announced a few weeks ago, I had some fun on my show with fans who should get in. And uh, almost every fan that you sh said you should be one of the ones going into the hall first. Can you describe your relationship with Oilers fans and what it's meant to you over the years? Well, thank you, uh, Reed. Uh, I, th I think it's very uh, humbling and very honoring from that standpoint, as I said earlier, but I can't thank enough for the fans. The, the, the order fans are the best fans in, in, in the game, uh, in my opinion, even in professional sports. I know it was back at Northlands and Rexall. It was just such an electrifying rink and we had that extra energy when we played in the 06 run and, and, and how much uh, impact that they made, whether it felt like, and even when I uh, retired in 14 there, it felt like I knew every single fan and it, it was that precious. Um, you know, people care about the Edmonton Oilers and it wouldn't be the Edmonton Oilers without guys like Lee Fogelin Kevin, Gretz, you know, Paul, the, the, the list goes on. And the generation that it, and the culture and the, the team that these guys, you know, uh, you know, developed and grew. And, and, and I know Slats was the one that headed all the, most of it up. And, you know, it carries on, you know. And then it was Dougie Waite, Billy Guerin, Kelly Buckberger, um, you know, Luke Richardson, there was another core group. And then, then it was guys like myself, Jason Smith and, and, um, you know, Sean Horkoff. And then it's just even passed down obviously to uh, dry saddle and McDavid now. So the culture that uh, the old Oilers had put in place, it was, uh, was huge. Um, and, and it's just carried on, which is a, a great tradition that the, uh, um, from um, the guys, I, I'm 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 really in awe of just listening to Lee talk to him about his stories, and and then even Kevin chiming in. It just you got to pinch me because honestly, I was this little kid growing up in Banff, Alberta, wanting to be an NHL player for the Edmonton Oilers, and I lived my dream, and I couldn't be more honored and humbled right now. Right on, thanks, Ryan and Lee. For you, I'm just wondering how much hockey Oilers or NHL, whatever, whatever it is you watch now. And are you, um, I, I've always thought there are two types of retired players. There are players who are in awe of what the players are doing now, or there are the retired players who think like, ah, come on. It was much better when I played. <laughs> Which one are you? Thanks. Well, Reed, I look at it and I'm, I'm in awe of what they do nowadays. It was really, when you sit back and you watch the speed and the way these guys even when you go to a bantam hockey game, how these kids handle the puck and how they pass it and uh, the size of them at, like, uh, at young ages. And then when you watch NHL right now, I mean, yes, everything happens in a split second, but how incredibly talented they are nowadays. It really is something to watch. That's for sure. Thank you, Lee. We'll go to Tom Gazzola of TSN. Hey, Lee. Hey, Ryan. Congratulations, guys, on the Hall of Fame nod. Uh, my question's for Kevin. Kevin, you've touched all aspects of this organization 
since day one in the NHL. And obviously you have a good uh, rapport with the WHA guys, but uh, being the 50th year of the organization, how long of a process, how tough of a process was it to, to get this Oilers Hall of Fame uh, going? And what do you think it means to the guys uh, that didn't get their banners raised and didn't make it to the Hall of Fame to be recognized this way? Yeah, good question, Tom. Um, <clears throat> the reality is this was uh, something spearheaded by Bob Nicholson, well, probably three years ago. Uh, we wanted to get it started. And of course, the, the pandemic uh, uh, settled into the world and, and everything uh, went sideways. So it's, it was in the works. Um, uh, and we knew that uh, there's a lot of great players that had played for the Oilers and, and uh, Lee and Ryan uh, had that list that uh, were great players, were very popular with the fans. And, uh, you know, there's you know, those types of players obviously needed to be recognized. And um, so uh, we're really proud of the fact that, uh, and excited about it. Uh, I think uh, the selection committee did an incredible job to pinpoint, uh, you know, the probably two of the most important players in the Oilers history by name and Ryan and Lee. And uh, it's, it's really exciting. I, I'm personally looking forward to November 3rd. I know the roof will be blown off. And the building, uh, I know uh, it's the right combination of, uh, of heart and, uh, and real true blue, blue Oilers that will be standing there at Center Ice uh, uh, having their, uh, their names put up in, in the inaugural Edmonton Oilers Hall of Fame. Kev, you, you shared some pretty good stories about Lee and, and Ryan Smith is a guy you played with, coached. You were his GM. You saw him come back and have a, a nice way to end and book and then bookend his career in here in Edmonton. What can you say about watching him grow up, not only as like a, a prominent hockey player in the NHL, but just as a person too? You know, when I think of Edmonton Oilers, I, I really can't think of anyone that was loved being an Oiler more than Ryan Smith. And uh, I know a lot of players love being an Oiler and, and the ones that are there playing today, I'm sure love being an owner, but Ryan really epitomized, as he said, you know, grew up in Alberta watching the Oilers, uh, you know, knew Glenn Sather from Banff, wanted to be an Oiler, got drafted with the Oilers, had success with the Oilers. Um, um, you know, I, I mean, Ryan and I have had a, had a great relationship, despite the fact that I traded him. You forgot to mention that, but I figured you're being kind to me. And uh, it's, it's definitely a regret in my career uh, because of the way things unfolded, uh, uh, the disappointment he had, the disappointment the fans had. At the time, we thought, you know, we were doing the right thing for the organization, but uh, sometimes you got to think beyond the, the, uh, what, what you think is the obvious. But I'm so pleased that I've had a relationship with Ryan. He's, he's, he's a great person. Uh, I like to think that I was instrumental in getting him on the 2002 Olympic team. Of course, he did the work in his play, but, you know, if you recall, he busted his ankle and uh, Dr. David Reed did an incredible job. And to see Ryan play for Canada and, and to experience one of his dreams, uh, additional dreams besides playing for the Oilers, that was, uh, I, I enjoyed watching that as, as much as winning the gold medal. So um, really happy for Ryan. I, I have a good relationship with his with, uh, with his parents, uh, wonderful people. And uh, I know that uh, Edmonton's loss is Nashville's gain, but uh, the family's uh, really prospering down there. And, and, and sure, I, I suspect we'll see a Smith uh, back in the NHL someday. Okay, it appears we've exhausted all questions. So we'll just turn it over to Kevin Lowe for one more comment to, uh, to bring it home for us. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Uh, again, as I said, uh, just mentioned to Tom, it, it's really the organization is really excited about it. Uh, you know, lots of great things going on with the hockey club uh, on ice. Uh, looks like the building will be full again. Uh, we're all out of the pandemic uh, uh, time and, um, you know, great things to look forward to. But we've had so many great uh, um, um, uh experiences in terms of some of the uh, some of the nights we've had uh, if we think back over the years and and so I we all really look forward to it. I know our staff 
really look forward to it because it gives them something to focus on besides the obvious that, you know, the games and selling tickets and getting people in the building and show them a good time. But uh, these types of events are, are, are really um, something the whole organization, I know the city looks forward to. So uh, and again, want to thank the uh, selection committee. I think they, uh, they, they hit the nail on the head. They found the right first two to go in. Uh, they'll be, uh, this is going to be an annual thing, of course, and, and as an organization, we're, we want to meld this into sort of an alumni homecoming that uh, we can invite former um, uh, players back into the city so they can come back and, and uh, be a part of the city or a place where they, they played and, and loved. So uh, lots of great things going to come out of this, um, uh, this Hall of Fame uh, uh, beginning uh, on November 3rd, and uh, we're looking forward to it.